Hi, Bill Hensaw here again with some thoughts on executive orders, Republican government, and how it affects the Constitution. Now, a lot of you may know uh, with what's recently occurred in the White House, I call it Trump tunes, with executive orders, birthright citizenship, and some other issues, and he thinks he can do away with citizenship at the stroke of a pen as commander-in-chief. Now, of course, that his only reference there was to the caravan flying across the Mexican border, but if he can do that for that group of people that would otherwise be citizens, it has to be that he can do it for everyone who owes their citizenship to that non-existent 14th Word Amendment. After all, it says all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof without limitation. So unless the president could only partially amend the Constitution and take out parts he doesn't like, and I think the, the original ten of the framers would have a big problem with that. You know, how in the world is this supposed to work? And that tells you a lot about the jurisdiction of their so-called courts, too. If you're subject to the president of the CIC, that's a martial law tribunal that you're in. And that's the exact opposite of the Republican form of government we're supposed to have guaranteed to the states by Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution, which you probably never heard of when you were in school either. I'm sure they didn't give me that one. I would love to have known it 50 years ago. But that's the problem, and we have this kind of thing. And then you say, well, what we talk about here is, you know, that we have elections, quote-unquote, even if they're valid elections, and those of you following my work know that I'm firmly entrenched in the belief that there are no states, that they're all territories, and there are no elections in territories. Even should I be wrong about that, which would be an astounding uh, uh, way to, I can't imagine I'm wrong about it, even if, you know, the elections we have now, if the president has all these delegated authorities as commander-in-chief of the armed forces, and by the way, a really good reference on that, and you can get this on request from me, a copy of it, it's called uh, Essays on Emergency Powers, the Senate Report in 1974, a very revealing report that's in vogue once again, given all the nonsense going on now. And you can request that from me and information on my constitutional defense document packets at uwinningcourt at gmail.com. And you're going to love the Senate report. It just spells it out. And they admitted at the time, 1974, the United States had been in a perpetual state of emergency, quote-unquote, for the last 40 years when Roosevelt gets into office. Now it's 85 years. Not only is it the same, it has gotten worse. No changes. This is what we have to fix. So if that's the case, and we had no elections, and or the members you elect to Congress don't have any power that the president can't abrogate, what the hell kind of a government is this? And I should say in passing, by the way, the Senate was never supposed to be elected by the people. They had their voice in the House of Representatives. The states are the ones represented in Congress if we had any states remaining, which we don't. That's why they could do the 17th Amendment at the time because there were no states anyway. It was almost moot, but they never bothered to tell anybody that. I guarantee you, no one understood that in 1913 when they passed this damn amendment. So the whole thing is just a joke, and the government was supposed to have defined and limited powers? Forget about it. I mean, the way the 90 farts had advanced the uh, Commerce Clause powers of Congress in the 1930s. NLRB versus Jones and Laughlin Steele, 301 U.S. 1. Not only read that, but as I tell people that follow what I do, you read all of the opinions, especially five to four, like this one, and you read the dissent of the four horsemen who were aghast at what they were doing with this reversal of decades of Supreme Court law on the scope of the uh, Commerce Clause powers of Congress. It was unheard of, and yet Roosevelt gets in there and they have the New Deal, which no one bothered to tell us the deck had 52 jokers. And, you know, then they find out that Roosevelt has the court packing pan in progress, and he wanted to replace all of the justices who were over 70 years old or supplement them with other ones who could assist them, quote-unquote, which would have reversed the then majority that had ruled against him early on and, and all his New Deal stuff, correctly done so. So they were under a lot of duress and coercion in the 1930s, and he eventually got what he wanted. But this is where we are today, and this is why this interstate commerce crap comes in, and you find out that almost all crimes are commercial 
comes under 27 Code of Federal Regulations 72. And what happens there is a lot of BS that goes with that, but they monetize all these crimes and the fines they force you to pay are monetized and there's a, 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 real, a, a real river of, 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 of blood going through there with the money going through the system and going into the hands of judges and others that support the system. It can't easily be proven, but you know damn well it's happened. And that's why they get so upset with you. You go in there with my documents and try to challenge them, and they get apoplectic, upset, threaten you with contempt of court, throw you in jail. I mean, this is why. Because some of them behind the scenes know exactly what it is we're saying and what's going to happen if we get the word out and get issues like this decided. We're going to stop them in their tracks, and that's what it is we need to do. And these are some of the main symptoms I pointed out in this little talk about what is going on and why we simply have no voice in government at all. And remember, the key element of this government is it's based on the consent of the governed. If any of you out there can find that somewhere, I would love to hear about it. You know, send me an email at uh, uwinningcourt at gmail.com. I would love to hear about it. I haven't seen it at all. I can't find it. Nowhere. So if we don't consent, they don't have any authority. That's how it works in this nation. The only nation that has ever been set up that way. It's up to us to go in there and stand up for our rights and make it work. So thank you. Uh, you know, Like this video. Subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Get the word out. Thank you.